Hey guys, John the Bearded Vampire here. Hope you're doing well in these bizarre, bizarre times that we are living in at the moment. Um, this apocalypse, um, so to speak. Um, this is the 21st month, Saturday, early hours of Saturday, 21st of March 2020. If you are watching this in the future, I hope we're still alive. Um, yeah, I, I know I'm kind of taking it a bit lightly, but I don't know. This coronavirus thing that's going on at the moment is a bit weird. Um, I don't know how long it's going to last. We don't know anything about it. We don't. There's a few theories going around about how we can slow things down with zinc and quinine and from what I've read online um, people are stockpiling toilet paper even though it doesn't give you diarrhea only 4% of people have diarrhea that have got it but yeah people are still stockpiling toilet paper which is really annoying um, we had to buy some off a friend Literally, she, she's always well stocked because she's quite an elderly woman. Um, so she always has quite a lot of packs um, in storage. Um, throughout the year, in general, I actually bought some and she's like, ooh, I know some people who might like it. So I went to her house and it was kind of like, ooh, CD deal going on. Um, no, I mean, I know the there was a theory behind the toilet paper in that we're supposed to wash our hands for 20 seconds and then we're supposed to dry it in paper towels or tissue paper or something like that and then throw that paper towel or whatever away rather than using a normal cloth towel and then have the germs lingering about there um, so maybe that's why people stop piling toilet paper that's my theory anyway I would like to assume it's because people are washing their hands and drying with it, but then it doesn't make any sense because kitchen roll, kitchen towel, you know, kitchen paper towel, um, they're still well stocked on that, so people aren't buying that. So, you know, what's what's cracking off? Um, yeah, people are going mental at the moment. And it's a bit crazy. I went to the shop um, Friday, yesterday, and it was out of milk, almost no eggs, out of beans, spaghetti, spaghetti hoops, peas, mushy peas, mushrooms, like tinned mushrooms, um, tuna. They hardly had any kind of meat selection except for like really, really, really expensive stuff that people are avoiding buying. Um, so, like, no minced beef, no, no cheap frying steaks, no chicken breasts, no chickens, no joints of roast beef or chicken or pork or hardly any bacon. Um, so, basically, no eggs. Cereal that was on offer, all that lot had gone. It was any of the more expensive cereal that was still available. Um, all the, I managed to get the last loaf of bread, um, and that was like a King's Bell 50 50. Um, all the white and all the wholemeal had gone, all the other stuff had gone. There was a few kind of bagels and cobs, and I think there was a few baguettes and a few in store bakery type of half loaves left, um, no milk, hardly any cheese, um, again the only cheese that there was was like the really expensive huge blocks of the stuff, um, people are going absolutely mental, I don't know why, uh, uh, um, the shop that I went to has now limited it to two items per customer, I'd like to to have the same item, which was annoying because I put three bottles of Coke in my 
trolley. Uh, talk about why people should live off coke. Um, got to the till and I found out it was two items um, by only or whatever. Um, so I had to put one of them back. Um, so that was a bit annoying. Um, there's plenty of chocolate though. I have noticed there's plenty of chocolate, plenty of sweets, plenty of crisps, plenty of cakes. So junk food, if you live like me and live off junk food, you'll be well away. You, know, you can easily survive off that stuff. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, on... The other thing that's going mental at the moment is um, home delivery. Um, before it, the, the new guidelines were brought in um, on Tuesday, which I think was the 17th of March, I went to do our weekly shop at Sainsbury's to find that there was no delivery slots available right up until the 6th of April. From between the 17th of March to the 6th of April, that's like three, three and a half, four weeks. Um, and that only happened within the week. Literally the week before, it was fine. I could order it Tuesday and have it delivered Thursday like normal. But within that space of a week, the world had gone mental and all those delivery slots had been bought. Um, one was like, oh, we'll try Iceland. So we tried Iceland. Um, I looked to book an order, like book a delivery slot before I ordered stuff. And there was nothing for a week, like up to the 25th. Um, so I, um, I thought, well, maybe if I order some food and then go into select delivery, it might give me some extra delivery slots available. But no. Um, and then the government brought in this kind of law, kind of rule kind of thing, saying that if you are over state pension age, vulnerable or self-isolating, um, you can get priority deliveries. Luckily, I live with my mum, who is a pensioner. She's been a pensioner for, I think, five, four or five years now. Um, plus she has asthma and CAPD, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, um, and a few other underlying health problems. So she's at the at risk category. Um, so luckily, because of that, we can get priority ship by delivery. Um, I went on to the Iceland shop. Um, purely because I didn't close the website down properly and it popped up about this so I clicked yes and all of a sudden loads and loads and loads of delivery slots became available so I was like oh mum mum dropping delivered um, so yeah we had one of those spent about 50 quid just getting we didn't get mental we didn't order like 10 of this and 20 of that we ordered just like the normal standard kind of shop at fifty pound and that'll do us for ages. But even they even at Iceland they were out of fresh minced beef, they were out of frozen minced beef. So we've had to order minced beef and onions, like frozen minced beef and onions kind of together. Um they were out of chicken breasts, fresh and frozen. So I've ordered cooked chicken strips that you just reheat in a wok or microwave or oven cold or whatever. Um, and that'll do us to have fajitas or a sweet and sour or chicken salad wraps or something. Um, I've ordered chicken breast fillets. So not a full chicken breast but kind of like a, a third or half of a chicken breast. A fillet type thing. Again, we can use that um, just as easily as we can that chicken breast. Um, 
there's means and ways if you if you know what terminology is you can you find alternate ways um I've ordered milk and this this delivery should be coming in the next um well, it's about half past four at the moment half past four in the morning it should be here between 12 and 2 so in about eight hours time um eight to ten hours yeah so we'll see what we get because quite a lot of those things might have been sold out that we have ordered i don't know um someone went to my eyes or neighbor her daughter-in-law went to farm foods and they were literally all their freezers were completely empty you know people are going mental it's just if you just had a little bit of respect and self-care for others yourself you know we won't be in this predicament of people having to rush around trying in to get home delivery slots and panic buying and everything because you know, and they once one once one bunch of people panic buy and there's not much left in stock the next lot of people that go in are going to go oh no there's not much stuff we best get loads and the next lot will go oh no there's even less stuff let's get even more um, and so it goes until you've got no stock and then those that haven't been able to get out like the elderly or people with mental health issues or normal health issues you know they're going to be they're going to be done for because they're not able to get anything um, you know, it's, it's crazy. We just need to kind of take a little bit of a step back and go, look, we'll only take two or three of these because we're only going to use two or three in the next however many days and then we'll go back and get another two or three when we've run out. Not we're going to get 20 dozen thousand of them in the hope that we don't run out in the next X amount of months. You know, I mean, we don't know how long this is going to last. You know, it could be over in three to four months. Um, the Prime Minister has said that some of the things that are closed are going to have to stay closed for about 12 months um, until we've, we're completely back to normal. Um, the amount of things that have been closed or cancelled or postponed, you know, it's unreal. Um, we're unsure about the Olympics. The Grand National has been cancelled. Football has been cancelled. Hockey has been cancelled. And ice hockey has been cancelled. Um, pubs, clubs, night clubs, bingo halls, cinemas, they're all closed. Um, what else have we got? Um, cafes, cafes, they're all closed. Um, I think the Tour de France has been cancelled. Glastonbury has been cancelled. Um, the Women's Tour de England has been cancelled. Cycling. Um, I don't know about the Download Festival yet, the Heavy Metal Festival. I'm assuming that's going to be cancelled. Because um, that's normally um, midsummer. So that might be cancelled. Um, what else is there? Like I said, we're unsure about the Olympics. With that being kind of that, London Marathon hasn't been cancelled, it's been postponed until possibly August, September, October time, which is like really late in the athletics calendar. Uh, coming towards the end of the season for that. So the Olympics, we're not unsure because that's normally kind of like August, September time. Like July, August, September, possibly October. So that might be postponed. That might even be cancelled. If they cancel it, will it be cancelled for four years? Will it be cancelled for one year? If they cancel it for one year, it will clash with the Commonwealth Games. If they cancel it for two years, it will clash with the Winter Olympics. Um, so will they just cancel it and then just not do it for another four years? Or will they go ahead and do it, but have it um, just athletes only, um, and just televise it? I don't know. 
Hey, no one, no one knows these things yet. So these are completely unheard of times. Um, I've got friends in America, um, in Canada, and in the UK as well, and they're all having to work from home. Some of them have been laid off. My next door neighbour's son, and he works at Toyota, and Toyota have closed down because obviously with it being car manufacturers, no one's really interested in buying cars at the moment. So there's no need to produce them. So the factory's closed down. Um, I've got a friend who's a graphic designer, and he's now working from home. Um, because obviously he can, you know, he's got a PC or whatever at home, so he can um, design stuff at home and then email it in or whatever to the company, and it can work like that. Um, I've got a friend in Canada who's like a university lecturer. He's now working from home, working and grading stuff via the computer. Um, it's completely mental. Um, Self-isolation and stuff like that, I mean, it's unheard of. I, with me having self kind of social awkward and social anxiety and socially inept apparently, um, because I've got these kind of issues and schizophrenia and depression, I don't go out much anyway and I'm actually finding myself going out more than what I would normally. So obviously I've got to go and fetch meds, I've got to go to the shop to get shopping, if we can't get it delivered, um, stuff like that. So, you know, I've been, I've been self-isolating for years, you know, but to see it on a mass scale is pretty freaky. Um, like I say, it's not really affecting me in that, it's not affecting my mood, which is what I'm used to doing it anyway. It's not as if I'm kind of this outgoing person who's kind of suddenly been kind of shut into four walls, therefore I'm kind of like a cage tiger. I'm used to doing this. Living in a confined space is what I do. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've got my mum's meds to get, I've got my own meds to get, I've got shopping to go for if we run low. Um, so I'm finding myself going out more or less just as much as what I normally would be. Um, it's not really affecting me like that. Mentally it's not affecting me because like I say I'm used to it. Health wise again it's what I'm used to so I'm not going to be kind of putting on weight or losing weight. I'm not kind of any major thing anyway. I'm on new medications which is kind of making me lose a little bit of weight I think anyway. Um, so yeah, I think it's affecting my mum a little bit, um, because she doesn't get out much anyway. Um, so I think she's going to have to go out even less than what she normally goes out. Um, she's a churchgoer, and that is Julian, Julian, whatever his name is, Jeremy, Julian, Julius. Whatever his name is, Jeremy, I don't know, whatever his name is, and the head of the Church of England. Um, he's said that there's to be no more um, masses because of people kind of social distancing, people not distancing themselves for social distance reasons. You, know, you can't really have them spread out in a church, so therefore, mass has been cancelled. So therefore mum's not going out on a Saturday anymore to go to church. The breakfast that she runs after it isn't going on anymore because it's normally about a dozen people around a small table. Um, so you now she's not getting out in that respect anymore. So you know, she's, she's not used to it like me. Um, so I think it is kind of affecting her a little bit. I've got a mate who's self-employed, my old flatmate, Justine, um, 
she's the sort of right up to it. Um, and obviously, if she gets out of work and has to close because there's no business, because people have been forced to close or haven't got the money, you know, she's she can't claim sick pay uh, because people self employed don't get sick pay. So she doesn't work, she doesn't earn, she doesn't earn, she can't pay bills. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a crazy, crazy world at the moment. It really is. Um, I've never known anything like it. Uh, but I've studied history. I took history at GCSE and I did about the First and Second World War. And literally, it is that kind of thing. Um, I honestly believe that we should bring out ration books again. Um, just to stop people going completely crazy. Because what's stopping you from going into one shop, getting the two maximum limit in one shop, going to another shop, getting the same thing, and the two limit there, and three limit, and then another two, and another three from different shops, and therefore stockpiling. It's not doing it in one shop, it's doing it over several shops. But technically, it's still stockpiling. Whereas I think if we had ration box where each person had a limit and could only buy what was in the ration box, um, you know, I think that would ease people's kind of tension up a little bit. Um, I, I, there's a lot of talk about. Um, Locking up trolleys and then allowing people to have baskets. Um, I can see where they're thinking of that, but I think these people are, are kind of single people that have thought this idea and not really thought about families because how can a family of say four or five or six, like a mum, a dad, and three or four children, um, how can they live off just one basket of food? Um, it's not really not possible, so I don't agree with that um, idea. Um, but whereas I think if we have a ration book where each kind of household is um, limited to a certain amount of produce, and then obviously it goes on who is in that household, so with next door it would just be um, the old lady. Would also be mum and me um, across the road. We've got a mum, dad, and two daughters, but they would get more because there's more of them. Um, you know, if it was just sorted, it had to be sorted out like that. And then obviously, you hand over your, your coupon at the supermarket or the shop or whatever, and you've got the product back, um, and then you won't be able to use it again um, because you've already handed it over once. It would stop people from stockpiling. So I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Um, you know, it would stop people from stockpiling from different shops. It would kind of be more even and more fair on the elderly who can't get the stuff. Um, I'm not sure how that would work to be receiving coupons, whether it would be through the post or whether you'd have to go to a building to get them, I'm, I'm not sure. But I think that's possibly the sanest thing to do. Um, yeah, I mean, it's turned into quite a long rant. I didn't really expect it to be 24 minutes and 13 seconds. <laughs> But yeah, I kind of just wanted to let off a bit of steam and explain things from my point of view. Um, I think that the world is going crazy over what is effectively nothing much. Um, I mean, we had, um, in effect, we've got less, about 1%, if that. And we've got, what have we got? Excuse me. Oh, there. We've got 
got about um, <coughs> I've got about 60, 66, 67 million people in the UK, I think. I think London's got two or three million people living in London. And another couple of million living in like Birmingham and Manchester, Edinburgh, stuff like that. So I think we've got about 60, 60, 67 million in the whole of the UK, England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales. And we've only recorded about 5,000 cases. To me, in my kind of calculations, that's less than 1%. We are doing all of this on less than 1% of infected people. That to me seems a little bit bizarre and a little bit strange um, because when it's flu season more than one percent of the population get ill with the flu and in effect that's all this thing is in my opinion i could be wrong if there are people out there who want to correct me please do but in my kind of what I understand is all you get is flu-like symptoms so in effect it is just a flu-like disease and virus um, the only people that are dying generally tend to be the old because they would die anyway of a flu or a cold or the ones that are kind of vulnerable like there's a woman who's just given birth and so her kind of natural body state would be in a, a low immune system um, so she's just died. Um, but yeah, we seem to be. Now I can't remember the figures of how many people die a year of flu. Um, I know it's not as many as what have died from this coronavirus, from what I can gather, I think. Um, but one of my friends on Facebook posted about when we had H1N1 or whatever it's called, you know, swine flu and stuff like that. More than a billion people worldwide were infected and yet we had none of this. You know, we had thousands of people dying from swine flu. Hundreds of thousands of people dying and there was none of this panic because the media hadn't taken hold of it. You know, because of social media and scaremongering and kind of just making things seem worse than what it really is. You know, I will, I will worry, and it, it to a certain extent it does worry me in not so much the disease, but the way we're reacting to it, um, the way we're allowing this thing to change who we are, to change humanity. Um, to become lesser people, you know, we're not rising above it and kind of uniting in, kind of uh, wiping it out. We just seem to be becoming kind of cavemen again, and just thinking just inwardly and about ourselves. Um, and that, that to me worries me. The, the virus itself, that doesn't really worry me because like I say it's not when it hits getting to several million people then I will start thinking, okay, maybe this is a bit serious but we are not at that stage we are nowhere near that stage um, so what's what's there to be scared of? what's there to be worried about? You know, it's the. I think also it doesn't help with obviously if people are panic buying stuff and stockpiling stuff, those that can't get it are going to go without, and therefore their immune system is going to be decreased. So therefore, their likelihood of getting the disease is going to increase. And I don't think that's very fair. Um, yeah, 
mean it's within. I know it's killed more people than SARS and MERS, um, from those outbreaks from the other kind of past decade or so. Um, just shows based on the than them. Um, what people are blaming China, granted, yes, it started in China, but they're saying, oh, they, they covered it up. From what I can remember, they weren't covering it up. Not like SARS and not like MERS, when they kind of first came out. Chinese covered it up and tried to pretend it didn't happen, that it wasn't actually there. But with this coronavirus, they've been open pretty much from where to go, from what I can remember from a few weeks back. But everyone's blaming China because they're saying they covered it up, saying that they weren't open from where to go. Um, again, because of people like Trump um blaming it on the Chinese and saying it's a world war against the world and so on. Um, and people not having their facts right. I mean I could my I could have my facts wrong. I don't know. I might have covered it up, but from what I can remember they've been pretty open about it from word go. Um, so you know why why are everyone having such a harsh time against the Chinese? Saying they covered it up and everything. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go. This is 30, almost 32 minutes of me ranting. Um, my mum can probably hear me upstairs. It's just starting to get a bit light outside. So, you know, best to go. Um, sorry it turned into a bit of a rant. Um, a lengthy rant. I want to. I want it to be a rant, but I don't want it to be a lengthy rant. Um, I'll see you all in another video. Stay strong. Take care of each other. And be safe. Bye.